We all think that Maine is a very peaceful state. We never hear anything about it. But this past week, there was a mass shooting, and I'm going to tell you all about it. How scary it is, and how they are still on the manhunt for the suspect. my Cajun cuties. How are y'all today? It's me, Anne Marie, the Cajun crime queen from Karenko, Louisiana. Cajun born, Cajun bred, and when I die, I'll be Cajun dead. I hope after this video, y'all like and subscribe and hang out with this Cajun cutie. Now, I am, I am really excited that Tuesday is Halloween. Halloween is my favorite, favorite, favorite holiday. So I'm wearing my uh, spooky sweatshirt and my little green eyes. I don't even know what this is. I'm not going to say a frog. But oh, wait, let me tell y'all a story about that. Oh, y'all ready for this now? Let me tell y'all. I am the headband queen. When I tell y'all the headband queen, I have over 100 headbands. I have always worn headbands because my hair is so thick and long that it just stays out of my face. I can't put it in a ponytail because it hurts. It's so heavy. So all I do is wear headbands. Do y'all know one day I went to Target, Walgreens, and picked up my little one from school with a bunny headband on? It was white with some pink ears. It was an Easter headband. No one told me anything. I was so embarrassed. And when I got to my daughter's school, she's like, Why, what are you doing? Why are you wearing that? I was like, oh my God. Because I, I put it on and I forget about it. You know what I mean? I just forget about it. Now, today is early in the morning, Friday morning, like extremely early, extremely early before the sun comes out. But I wanted to jump on here and give this extra video this week because a lot of y'all are messaging me about the main shooting and what are my thoughts and what are my feelings and do I think he's gonna get caught, you know, all of that. So I'm here to share with y'all today. Now, this happened on Wednesday, October 25th, 2023 in Maine. Robert Card was born in April of 1983. He is 40 years old. We don't really have much information on him. We do know that he was in the Army Reserve. And we know he has an active military ID. And we do know that over the summer, he was placed into a mental facility for two weeks. He was having visions of, of shooting up some military place and hearing all these voices in his head, which, y'all, that has to be agonizing it, 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 to go through that. You know, to, to hear that in your head constantly, you, that, that must drive a person crazy. I know it would for me. And he was sent there. He left. Now, I don't know why he left after two weeks. I don't know if they released him. I don't know if he released himself. I don't know what happened. But we do know he was released. And why would, wouldn't people say anything about the guns? People knew he had weapons. And why weren't they taken away? That's my question. But... In the state of Maine, they don't have the red red flag law. They the red flag law means mental health officials can take action when removing guns. Maine has the yellow flag law, which means law enforcement is the only one that can remove guns when someone's gone to through a mental health crisis. Now, the big question is, did law enforcement know about this? Did mental health Issue, did the mental health officials notify the law enforcement? I don't know. I don't know how that works. But I, I just, I don't understand why this man had guns if he was hearing all of these voices and, and, and constantly having this erratic behavior. So y'all tell me in the comments below if y'all have any information on why he still had all these guns in his possession even after attending a mental health facility. Now, on Wednesday, October 25th, a suspect entered Just In Time Rec Center, which is a bowling alley, and opened fire. And at 6.56, law enforcement started receiving several 911 calls. Minutes later, at 7.08, they received more 911 calls from a different place, a bar, which is not far from the bowling alley, that there was an active shooter. It was extremely, extremely scary. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, he killed 18 people and 13 were injured. Y'all, devastating. And you know what else I'm afraid of? Let me tell y'all what I'm afraid of. This is, what, this is what really gets me. Why a bowling alley? 
Was he, because whenever I think of a bowling alley, what do you think of right away? Children, right? I mean, because I don't know about you. I mean, I'm an adult. I don't play, I don't bowl. I think I would probably fall. But anyway, was his target children? What was the purpose of him going to the bowling alley? And what was the purpose of him going to the bar? So that's what I'm wondering. What was the purpose there? But it's so, so scary. Now, the law enforcement showed up. They found the suspect car within hours. They did. They looked in it. They did locate a firearm in the car. He drove to a boat launch. Now, his boat and himself, Robert Card, they are both missing. So, I, you know, I really think that he jumped on a boat right after he parked his car, left, the, left it there, jumped on the boat, and went somewhere. I don't know where he went. Did, was somebody waiting for him? Did he have an Uber somewhere? Did he have, did he rush to the airport? Is he acting alone? Was his plan to take his life after he did this in some remote area so no one would find him? I don't know, but everything is on lockdown in this town, which obviously, obviously, because they don't know where this man is and he is going through a mental health crisis right now. So no telling what he's going to do next, okay? So the schools are closed. The town is closed. Other counties are coming together to help with the search of him. They are doing whatever they can to find him. And last night on Thursday, October 26th, they surrounded his last known address at this house. They got on the megaphone. They, you know, come, come with your hands up, whatever. You know, they were just trying for hours, but no one came out. They have no idea where he is, but they are doing everything they can to find him. Now this happened in Lewistown, Maine. And I think in my personal opinion, this is just my personal opinion. Did he target these places like a bowling alley or this bar because it was a soft target? Meaning there wasn't much security. Is that why he did it? Did he know the area? Did he know there wasn't going to be security? What was the, the reasoning for this? Now, they are looking for him everywhere, everywhere. I mean, I, they, they have gone through everything. Now, they are, pursu they are pursuing every, every lead they get. They have over 70 witnesses, which is amazing because they can hear everything about the case. They're still investigating the bowling alley and the bar the whole town is just working together. You know, they on lockdown, the schools. It's just, it's a devastating time right now in Maine. Now, as of Friday morning, this morning, um, law enforcement was sending, uh, they were sending divers to the bottom of this river in nearby Lipson, Maine. Now, they said they are going to be looking for evidence and or bodies. Y'all, what do they know that we don't know? Because what, like, why, why bodies? Do they, do they know there's somebody else? Do they think there's someone else? Why bodies? Because, I mean, I'm thinking he can't do anything if he's at the bottom of the river. Uh, he can't, well, what can he do? They should be searching the entire area, the woods, right? Well, they also, they also gonna go down to the river with divers. They also have planes, every law enforcement, other counties. I mean, they are really, really getting into this. Now, at Robert's home, they did locate a note that was addressed to his son. And the note, sources say, is a suicide note. Okay? I don't know. That's, that I was said. We don't know if that's true or not. It also said that it contained ranting and personal details like bank details and where to find things. Now, his family, is, they are cooperating with authorities. They, they are just as freaked out about all of this as anybody else. So they are actively helping authorities with any, anything they need. Now, this is a bombshell. This is a bombshell that's bothering me. They interviewed Robert Cord, his sister. She stated that he, he may have gone to the bowling alley and the bar looking for his ex-girlfriend. Now, if that's true, which is horrible horrible if you having any type of mental health issues at that moment y'all please y'all can even message me 
go get help don't resort to violence and don't do not hurt yourself life is so beautiful like you we have so much to live for so if he was out there looking for his ex-girlfriend why kill all these people so my question did this all start over a domestic dispute did this all start because of an argument or he was looking for her i, I don't know what it is but it's horrible how he just went off the deep end and did all of this it sounded to me it sounded planned because he had this i mean he, he brought his car to the boat launch you know he he left in a boat and, and we don't know we think he left in the boat because the boat's missing and he's missing so you know put two and two together so he was also married and his wife filed, filed for divorce in 2007 and they shared custody of the son so I'm sure we're going to hear other interviews with the family members so we can know a little bit what's going on with his background. But y'all, in my personal opinion, I think he's one of those guys being in the military that, you know, can make a shopping mall out of a toothpick. So he can live in the woods. He can survive in the woods. He might have had this whole plan for months or years, to, you know, built a tree house and going to live in there with all kinds of stuff in it. I don't know. But if that's the case they would have found the boat. So then my mind, you know, all the crime stuff that I deal with, I start thinking, did he sink the boat? Did he have stuff waiting where he knew he was gonna sink the boat because the boat cannot be found? Are divers looking for the boat? Could the boat be at the bottom of this river? It's all these questions because this is scary, y'all. When you have someone that's going through a mental health crisis that may or may not have guns, you it's scary. They may hurt themselves. He may go to another state and do the same thing. We just don't know. Now, Robert Cord would engage in conversations about having concerns about our financial crisis, about gun rights. He had been in the Army, in the U.S. Army, since December of 2002, and his rank was a sergeant first class. And he had no compact deployments. And his job was a petroleum supply specialist. So maybe y'all can tell me down in the comments about the military. I don't really know much about it. All I know is that I want to thank y'all for everyone that has served in any type of army, military, anything. My love and, and support goes out to all of y'all and all of the families. Both my grandfathers were in World War II as well as my father in the army. So I know all about um, people that that are in the military. And I really, really want to thank y'all for everything that y'all do for fighting for our freedom. Anyway, they also said that he would behave er erratically. He was doing all kind of crazy things. Now, over the summer, there was a training camp for the West Point cadets. They were doing some kind of training and he went to support them. He was not an instructor. He never had any type of conversation with the cadets. I think he was just there helping some kind of way. Well, he was showing violent, violence to other soldiers, threatening to do stuff, threatening to shoot, shoot up places or shoot people. They said he was behaving horribly. So they put him in the, the health facility over the, the mental health facility over the summer. And he was only there for two weeks, which is scary because that's only two weeks. Why wasn't he there longer? If, he is, if he's hearing voices about shooting up places, why wouldn't they keep him a little longer to find out what medications work or what medications don't work to put him in this a good mental state? But I don't know what happened there. So if y'all know any information of why he left after two weeks, y'all drop down in the comments below because I would, I would like to know. So my question is, if he was doing all these threats, y'all, if he was telling everybody he was going to do this and he was, he was threatening people with violence, the soldiers, they had to remove him from the, from the summer camp in upstate New York. Why didn't anybody take the guns away? Why didn't anybody, did somebody inform them? Hey, there's some guns. He has guns. Let's take them away. I don't know how it worked. I don't know what, who dropped the ball or what dropped the ball or did, did Robert just check himself out? I don't know if you could do that in mental facilities, but maybe you can. He was like, I don't need this. I'm done. I mean, the, maybe y'all can tell me in the comments below, how does that work? My final thought. Y'all know I always give my final thought at the end of the video. My final thought, Robert Cord is no longer with us. I have a feeling that Robert Cord 
did what he had to do, and then took his life, which is sad. I am getting Brian Laundry vibes. We all know Brian Laundry. He killed um, Gary Petito in the woods in Wyoming in um, August of 2021, and he did all that. And then we was you remember how we were searching for Brian Laundry forever? We couldn't find him anywhere, and we finally found him, and he had taken his life. So I'm just wondering, did Robert Card have all of this and, and said, I'm going to re be remembered as this and then take his life? I just have a feeling that Robert Card couldn't take it anymore. Now, I know someone that their son took, took his own life. And from what I hear... He left a note and the note said that he couldn't take hearing the voices anymore. He just couldn't take it. Now, that has to be agonizing, y'all. That has to be horrendous. If that, if that is going through your head constantly, if you're hearing all these voices telling you to do stuff or, or hurt yourself and you just can't take it anymore, try to get some help, y'all. That, that would it just It sounds like it would be agonizing to hear voices all day. And it is hard for someone to deal with that. So maybe Robert couldn't take it anymore and the voices told him to go do that. And then after that, he was like, look, I'm not going to jail or I, I feel bad. Let me just take my own life. But I don't know if, I don't know if that was his purpose. You know, I hope they find him. And I, I hope that, that he's alive and they, they find out why he did this. Because he really did belong in a mental health facility. We don't know what kind of issues he had, but obviously he had several because he had been acting erratically. He had been doing things. And if this was all about an ex-girlfriend, shame on him. Because so many people and so many families lost their life and their loved ones. This was a horrible, horrible, horrible act. And I just wanna let y'all know that if anybody is having any type of mental health issue, please, y'all, go get some help. We don't want anything to happen to anyone. We want y'all to get help because we don't know people's mental issues. I cannot stress that enough. People in this world aren't crazy. They aren't lunatics. They have mental health issues, and we need to educate ourselves every day on mental health issues with different people. I will cover this case. I will do as many updates as as as, as y'all need because that's why I'm here. So y'all can sit back and relax and have this Cajun cutie tell y'all the story. I hope y'all enjoyed my video. I hope y'all like, subscribe, comment so y'all can help this Cajun cutie out. I really appreciate it. And I hope y'all have a great weekend and happy Halloween, y'all. Happy Halloween. Y'all tell me, tell me y'all costumes y'all wearing. Y'all tell me if y'all going to parties. What are y'all doing? Do y'all give out candy? I love to give out candy. Oh my God, it's so fun. So just t kind of tell me, give me an update on what are y'all doing this weekend and what are y'all doing for Halloween and if y'all going, going to any haunted houses. I love that. But I hope y'all enjoyed me, the Cajun Crime Queen, Anne-Marie. And until then, I'll see y'all later. Bye! Mwah.